Hi, I'm Carcina. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world. And I'm just giving my two cents on it. Go in and do a raid at someone's house, but you don't have an arrest warrant for them. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things that they tell you to do. And always remember. Everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah. 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 So, as long as you remember that, you'll be okay. <laughs> now, the problems that you're faced with today in today's times, uh, you've seen a lot of different things transpire when it comes to comedians, actors, or whatever, because of Cat Williams' success, um, doing 60 million, you know, all these attention thieves, they can't seem to help themselves to come out and say something or trying to go viral and trend oh we're gonna get to that j-rock 79 we're gonna get to that it's not old news it's still new news <laughs> she just went on the breakfast club damn now gerard carmichael is promoting his new reality show <clears throat> every show he had has failed It has not performed well, and it has come up short. Every single one of them. So now, since he came out doing his HBO special, and he said it for the first time, um, he came out as gay for the first time or whatever, live on that stand-up. Now he's got all these doors that open. He had the Carmichael show. And it was like, wow, went for two seasons. And now he's got a reality show called the Gerard Carmichael reality show. So now he decides to promote that by using Dave Chappelle as basically the punchline. And his, you know, he went after Dave for saying what he said about the Transformer community and saying, Dave, you know, if you Google your name, that's what's going to come up. Now, you know, that's what you're going to be known as now. You know, instead of the great comedian that you are, this is what you're going to be known as. Why would you bring that up publicly except for to try to draw attention to yourself? Because you think this is going to draw attention to your show. Obviously, this reality show that he got going on isn't designed for any of us, uh, meaning uh, heterosexual men. Just seen uh, a glimpse of a trailer before I turned it off told me this is not something I want to watch. Maybe some of you would want to watch it, but uh, me, I'm out. It's not something that I'm interested in and you can tell the agenda when it's uh right in front of you front line and center what do i mean by that okay well, i'm glad you asked let's take a good look at the agenda base these are his shows right one show is before he came out he's all dressed in clothes sitting there like a regular human being it's called the Mike the Carmichael show, right? It ran for two years. Now that he's out the closet and he came out, now he's posing in his drawers and saying this is the cover of the show. Gerard Carmichael reality show. And it's coming out in 2024. And the cover of it is you in, in your underwear. 
So what are you selling about the show? Is this is a show for heterosexual men? I don't think so. Because everybody will wonder, what are you trying to sell and advertise? We see the agenda right there in front of you. That's the agenda. Why do you have to get butt naked in your underwear for your reality show? And why would you why would you choose that photograph? Well, it's another it's another opportunity to make us look docile. It's another opportunity to make us look estrogen like <laughs> less testosterone. Anybody who has less testosterone, they always want to highlight, promote, and roll them out. Now, the Carmichael show didn't get the backing and whatever. Gerard Carmichael is probably a better writer than he is a comedian. Um, I saw him do stand up before. Before he came out the closet, I was not a real big fan of him before that. So, has nothing to do with that. So, then he goes on um, The Breakfast Club and he makes this statement I deeply regret ever saying anything about Dave Chappelle to the press. I want to say that I'm sorry for that. I love Dave. Like, I, I think he's brilliant. I think he's a bright light in a mm -hmm. dying industry. Dave Chappelle is an artist. He's one of the few artists that we have. And I care deeply about the work that he makes. The criticism that I had had nothing to do with the morality of the, the joke. That's something that has also been misreported. The, the criticism I had was that of a fan. I want him to focus his genius on a wide range of topics. I think that, but it started being really, really focused on one thing. I disagree. Like, That's like us I, saying that about the slave joke. I'll, I'll say, I'll say this. That joke works if I had a black boyfriend. My boyfriend were black. That joke actually works better if I had a black, black boyfriend. And you the slave and the white person is the slave. I'm from North Carolina well, where you look, know the first anti-literacy laws were created in North and South Carolina. Sure, you know that's not my role as a comedian to start getting into like, like literacy laws and stuff like that. You've completely lost it. I, and because I've talked about Dave a lot, I don't want to talk about Dave anymore. From now on, any thoughts I have for Dave will be directed in a phone Dave. call to Dave. I'll never do it again. And why did he make a decision to do that? Because he got caught making a race joke because he's dating a white man. Why does the black man have to make race jokes to appease to the white guy? I don't understand that. And he's trying to basically victim blame everybody else. If I had a black gay boyfriend, this would be okay. Says who? You're trying to victim blame and then throw it on somebody else and gaslight the situation. So to cover up the fact that you got caught making a slave joke that offended black folks, you throw Dave Chappelle under the bus. So you got a phone call from Dave. And Dave was smoking and choking. You could smell the smoke through the phone. He was choking you. <laughs> he had smoked about a half a pack. <laughs> while he was talking to you and smoked a whole pack before he called you. Listen, I know you got a show and you got to do what you got to do, man, but why you got to bring my name up? <sighs> so many times I've heard you comedians bring my name up and throw it around and I don't respond because I hate you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to go back and forth and comedy battle you. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Of course he's doing that. 
But you got to look at what is the motive? What is the motivation here? Why is he doing it? Why would he do it? Because he's trying to shift the blame to everybody else. Then when Charlemagne started talking about literacy laws and how the Carolinas came up with all the literacy laws, he was like, oh, you just lost me. I'm just a comedian. Now you talking literacy laws. I'm lost. Okay. Why am I giving this fool attention? Because this fool needs to be addressed. You see, people are scared to say anything about somebody. If they're gay, they just clam up. Oh, whoa, 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 they're gay. Can't say a word to them because they're gay. No, they people too. <laughs> and when they do some bullshit, they can be called out on it. Don't go hiding behind your gayness when you didn't sit up there and got busted for making this dog on slave joke that nobody thought was funny to appease to your white boyfriend. Black folks didn't like that. So then you wanted to turn the whole thing on Dave Chappelle when Dave had nothing to do with anything that you did. Don't use day to try to get out of the heat you didn't put yourself in. That ain't Dave's fault. That's your fault. You the one gonna have to atone. Not Dave. I haven't seen him in forever. Didn't realize he was gay. He didn't know he came out either. Well, well this might be a, a revelation for you. He going to be, what's going on? Why is everybody so mad? <laughs> oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. But to say Gerard Carmichael is not being pushed, he is. Whether that's based on his sexuality, I don't know. Is it based on his talent? I don't know. He was talented before. Talented for a lot of years. He could write, he could act, he does comedy. And nobody was giving him really the push. They tried for a minute to really blow him up. And a lot of people didn't know why. He had a comedy show already. It was like, man, this dude got a comedy show? Because what Cat Williams said, this is these type of guys they try to promote. Cat was calling these dudes out. And when these fat guys become skinny guys, that's how you know they got the bag. Haven't you noticed that's when they really sold out? When they go get the bag. All these fat guys get real skinny. And they were better when they were fat. But now they get in the bag, they got to get skinny. You ain't know they did that, did you? They put them on that diabetic medicine. Make them lose weight. That's that new thing now. Remember Anthony Edwards was doing that and got skinny and then he started getting them robes. Next thing you know, he's blackish. 
He was in everybody's black movies. What about Faison Love? Exactly. What about him? You see, he's still on the sidelines. He ain't get skinny. There you go. Olympic. <laughs> right. He stayed fat, and that's why he on the chitlin circuit. Look what they did to uh, who your boy, Lil Rail. He was fat. Everybody liked him. Now he look weird as hell. He's like super skinny body with a weird sucked in face with big clock daddy glasses on. He look weird as hell. I'm like, man, what happened to the fat dude that was in <laughs> Uncle Drew? They stick that vacuum cleaner up they butt. <laughs> Suck that damn fat out of there. And there they go. They brand new. What's the other one on Hollywood Unlocked? Jason Lee. Want to be famous so damn bad. They just stuck a vacuum cleaner up his butt. Oh, he, he was like, oh, he probably does that all the time. <laughs> And he was a big old fat one too. They didn't suck the fat out of him. Now he's skinny. So they got all these fat dudes getting skinny. Look at Stephen A. Smith. He can't stop. He didn't. He didn't got him so skinny. He keep going. He keep going. They gonna send his ass to Cambodia somewhere. Hey, I'm not from here. <laughs> he didn't got all super skinny now. Mm-hmm. All for the price of fame. For the price of that Hollywood dollar. And then all of a sudden, he has a comedy special coming out, and everybody's like, okay, well, what is it? Then it was revealed that he's going to be coming out in the comedy special. Then everybody jumped over there to watch it, to see him come out. Then it was Gerard Carmichael comes out. Now, if you want to know why he came out, that's on the Patreon. We've already covered that. Now, because, you know, somebody's dead behind all this. Yeah. Another comedian's dead. Nobody even cared. Nobody. Yep. They just went, went on ahead and did their own thing. Yeah, it was murder. Well, it wasn't a murder, but they go. Now. Lavelle Crawford, now if you ever see him get skinny, you know he got the bag. Now Lavelle, hilarious, but they ain't gonna let him get to that upper echelon because he's too big. Unfortunate, because he's hilarious. There are so many people out there that don't really understand or get how this gist of this business is. But you wonder why these people don't blow up? Because they don't do what they're supposed to do. Kevin Hart started working out every day, started lifting weights. He's a little skinny dude with big teeth. Little beaver teeth. Went and got them veneers. Got his teeth fixed. Started lifting weights. Now he a little short dude with cocky arms. And skinny legs. Look weird. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's what happens. This is called <laughs> the way it is. So now Gerard Carmichael is blowing up everywhere. He's getting a lot of awards. He hosted a damn award show. They put him in there. All because he came out. Had he not come out, nope. No show. No nothing. Because we damn sure don't talk about him. Nobody I know that that's black even talk about him. We don't consider him part of the black community when it comes to comedy. We don't consider him at all. They would take little rail before him. Yeah, when you saw him, you looked like you looked at him and thought, okay, that's a suburban black guy from Portland or somebody. <laughs> You know, he's one of those guys that's just there. Like, well, he's black. <laughs> we can say that. When did he come out? I have, I mean, when did he come out? This is about, what, two years ago? Two, three years ago, I think. See, I never heard of him until that Patreon video. Most of you not. And believe me, he's not going to be in your news. But this new reality show is sick, in my opinion, because I know I don't want to see that. And I don't want to see him in his underwear on my 75-inch screen TV. Why did they feel necessary to show that? And why did he choose? Because I'm quite sure he's the executive producer and it's his show. Why do you choose to be out here in your drawers on the cover? But when but when you were in the closet, you were of the Carmichael show, you're fully dressed. Everybody's sitting appropriately. Now that you're out the closet, you want to be completely nude. This is what you wanted to do all along? Huh? That's 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 the move. Hmm? This is what you got to do to get on? So you want to gaslight Dave Chappelle because that's what you want to do to get on? Why is that the cover for your album? I mean, no, not your album, but for your reality show. That's to sell it to who? Not us. You see what I'm saying? Mm-mm-mm. Well, the situations that are strange often remain the same. People will do anything for money, unfortunately, and they will compromise their soul. They will do so much. Now, if they won't, like, y'all, they don't understand. Dave is a monster on that mic. Now, they don't want to make get Dave mad. They don't want to do that. Dave wants to make comedy about comedy. He don't want to attack comedians. That's not what he wants to do. That's not the form of comedy he wants to do. D-Ray going to get all into it. Like, no, that's the way to do it, man. We got to that's going to make it exciting. We got to bring excitement back to comedy. No. That starts a domino effect of everybody want to see a comedian go after another comedian. They ain't going to want to hear the jokes no more. The jokes is not going to be there no more. They want to hear who you finna talk about now. And all these comedians are following suit. They're going on these podcast shows. And what are they doing? Talking about each other. Every time you look around, another comedian has got something to say about another comedian. 
Now, if you wanted to bring all this stuff up about Dave and what you said to Dave, why did you wait to now to bring that up when you get in hot water about making a slave joke? Then you had the other comedian talk about George Floyd and make a joke about him, and he blow up for like a week or two. Then he disappear. He says a lot of crazy stuff, but that guy's actually funny. That other guy, yeah. He's actually he's actually funny, but he just says wild stuff. Like he says some crazy things. But he's actually funny. So I don't get mad at him. I just stated for what it is. A lot of people feel like everybody else standing in their way. They look to make excuses for everybody. That's that's just the norm of it. So when he apologized to Dave Chappelle publicly, you know, that was the right thing to do. And hit the like button, good people. That was the right thing to do because it was the only thing to do. You got what you wanted now. You got your fame. You own the breakfast club now. You was donkey of the day. Now you up there to advertise your show. Now you can go ahead and change and pivot. Now it's I love Dave. I don't hate Dave. I love Dave. He's a great comedian. I just was saying, now, anytime I say something about Dave, I will address it straight to Dave. Exactly, because Dave is the type that will come out and expose you. I know, right? Yeah. So that's enough for him. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get myself something to eat. Shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life, Mondo Black TV, Ticket TV. Welcome to HDII TV. Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez, and I'm out.